We're interrupting this program in order to begin our regularly scheduled broadcast. Thanks for watching the Lit TV Network. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. That is my motto. Welcome to Kim's Universe. Um, I am your host, Kim Warner, and I have Gregson with me, Gregson Strat. Ashley Townsend is here. Gregson, how are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good to see you and what you're doing after um, a few years. Uh, tell us about your business. Oh, uh, which one, right? Mortgage. Um, the mortgage one. <laughs> the, mortgage one uh, the mortgage one, it's 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 more of a financial literacy based off my experience as a loan officer for mortgages. Um I kinda created something through my mortgage from two thousand and eleven. I, I got licensed, I took the safe exam and um, you know, off and on. But it's more so a financial literacy to teach individuals how credit works, how mortgages work, um, how debt works, um, and just expose them to the basic terminology. So when they actually walk into a loan office or um, a bank for that matter, they, they can have a better understanding of the questions and have a, a better understanding of the conversation so they can be better prepared to answer questions and put themselves in a situation where you know, let's face it, a mortgage can, it is the largest liability that you can take out. And even that misperception of owning a home, well, you, you can own a home, but when you go for a mortgage, you own the debt, you don't own the home. So just basic functionality, basic terminologies to help you navigate that type of financial industry. Does that make sense? It definitely does. You're in my questions. Did you read those uh, that platform note or no? <laughs> I, I, I skimmed through it. I, just, I, I am doing so much, but I wanted to be prepared um, at least to review things and have an understanding about, um, you know, the chakras, the, the energy, the confidence, things of that nature, correct? Right. Right. Um, that That's the number one thing you have to do is believe in yourself, right? And um, it, it's hard. And I think we all have a story to tell. We all, ha we all have our own journey, walking our own light. Um, it's going to be hard to do that, you know. And I'm pretty sure everyone who's a part of this right now and beyond, you know, just knows what it is to struggle some, some way. And at the same time, some way find it out, you know, no, no matter if it's the next day, the next week, the next year so. You know, but that's why I kind of design credit mortgages and debt solutions group, but I'm actually transforming it um, because I'm and this is part of the, the financial literacy aspect of it. I'm sorry, getting into um, insurance, life insurance, IULs and um, other retirement, preparing people for retirement. Um, but before that, to answer your question, is just the basic need to understand a basic conversation when you walk into a bank or if you try to take out a loan or deal with interest in any way, I help people understand that. Um, I think that that is very necessary in these times, these end times, as they might say, but um, with mortgages going into, or the banking system first, let's just start there. Uh, before I go there, um, I would like for Ashley to tell everyone about her uh, businesses. All right. So I have Business Grace, which is kind of going through a little bit of a transformation, but it is still um, business coaching and consulting for startups and um, entrepreneurs to build their foundations. Um, I'm involved in this conversation also because I am a realtor, as well as you mentioning life insurance. I am insured to also do life insurance for people. I have my license as well. So when you said that, it touched on every point and everything that I kind of... Um, love to do. I think people need to be educated before they make any decision. So if you don't have that education and you don't have that foundation, that's why my business, Business Grace, is about foundation. Because without that, you have nothing. You don't have that basic understanding. You can't make those important decisions. And as my experience as a realtor, I get people, yeah, my budget is 250000 Where did you get that number from? Oh, I just hmm. picked it. That's not how this works. 
there's a step before this that I need you to do. So um, you are just thank you because people don't people don't get that education before they're getting that education with me through my lenders, and it's sometimes it's difficult because my lender is telling them one thing, then we're looking at different houses. They have a laundry list of things that they want, and I'm like, but based on what my lender is telling me. I can't get you a house in the mountains with a pool. Right. We got to start somewhere else. We got to, we got to build, we got to look at your credit. We got to analyze, analyze, do an analysis on things. So I appreciate that. That's something that you even do for people because some people don't care. Well, um, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it, it, and they don't care because it's a conversation that we were having earlier that we were taught to just jump into things and say, I'm going to do this rather than setting a goal and um, educating ourselves on what it takes to do this as in what you're saying. So to bring confidence in and even using the chakra system, because I like that building of the temple within. Um, and I like it because here is Matthew 7. Jesus said, everyone who hears his words and put them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Now, it is stone a rock, but anyway, we're also talking about the rock, Peter, faith. And faith will take you into different areas of life where you will fall and you'll get back up. But the reason why you are stepping out on faith is because you don't know what you're doing buying a house, but you need to learn all or the banking system, putting money in the bank, teaching your children. You need to learn the intricate parts of doing that. You need to learn about life insurance. And so now this is the confidence that I have in Christ to learn what I don't know. That's the confidence that's attached to now. What do you guys have to say about the banking system? Because you know I can say a whole lot, but I want to hear from you all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, who wants to go first? Because I, I do have, <laughs> you know, dealing with mortgages is is you really are dealing with the banking system because at the end of the day at the end of the day no matter how you slice it it's about interest it's about making money of people who are designed to be workers you know not real entrepreneurs because that's you know rockefeller didn't want a society of thinkers you know wanted a, a society of workers because that's the labor force so the banking system is just designed to keep people in debt so they can make interest. That's that you really, I mean, when you really think about it and you can make it bigger, you can glamorize it, you can put things on it. But when you layer everything away, it really comes down to the workings of interest and making money off people, keeping people indebted, enslaved. And you can have a whole conversation around how do you navigate through that with confidence, knowing that it's kind of rigged against you, you know, even when you're going to take out a loan or how do you navigate that? Which loan to take out, you know, um, you know, even what is interest and to walk forward confidently, it's, 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 it's a tough thing. If you don't have guidance, if you don't, you know, you just assume and go of what other people say and in a way that can be, you know, develop something false in you, but I don't know. I don't know. I just think the banking system is is designed just to make money off of you. That's just what it comes down to. Even in the world, if you look at the world and the world banking system, what they do to Africa and African countries, you know, and, and rape them of their natural resources, you know, just to tax them, <laughs> you know, just levy, you know, just levy all types of money making levies on them, which is interest. That's really what it comes down to. So the, in a way, the, the system is not broken, y'all. If you really think of it, it's not, it's, it's working to a T. You know, it's, it's designed for low income people. Like I'm learning about, you want to talk about mortgages. I'm learning how, and you could attest to this doing um, life insurance. It's just the tax code is designed more for businesses, not working people. So if you have mm. businesses, you get better tax breaks, ta better tax deductions, better itemizations and all this other stuff. Um, moving money around, you know, if you incorporate it. So you have to look at mortgages as debt, as just one big lump sum of debt. You know, that's what a mortgage literally stands for, right? 
and people who are familiar with mortgage, mort, a mortare, a mort means death. It means death pledge. So you're under the false pretense, pretenses of owning a home and you really don't own a home. You own the debt. You understand? So raising a family, you know, dealing with family, dealing with work, balancing everything and to do that confidently, you need a partner, I guess, if, you, if you're talking about a home. So it's kind of different angles on what you, um, you know, want to talk about the banking system because it branches off into your whole way of life. You know, you get taxed on income. Then you go to the store, you get taxed on your food. <laughs> you know, you want to go park somewhere, go to eat, but you got to get taxed through valet and still buy something to eat. And I don't know. It's just banking system is crazy. I, I think that, um, and I agree with you, I think that the myth of what the banking system is about needs to be taught. As you said, you are a financial educator, and that brings people into a perspective where they're able to understand if there's an inflatable mortgage. That means that, and all the, the let, let's just go back and say all the different kind of mortgages. Um, the interest on car loans when you buy a car, it shouldn't be... Um, 10% or 8%, you know what I'm saying? And all of that is predicated on your credit. Uh, the reason why we fear um, things when they come out of proportion concerning bills is because we didn't understand and we were not educated about these different aspects or that bills were created for the worker the common worker, and it is the people that work paycheck to paycheck because that's the system, and that's how they, um, I want to be politically correct, the uh, politicians and those in that tier, that's how they continue to make money within their uh, circle of, uh, of, it's like a tribe. So if you're, if you have no knowledge when you're going to the bank and you're buying your first car, then what happens is, is that you can get a car that's $50,000 and you don't have enough money for it. Well, that's very simple to some of us that's been through the experience. But for those who just want that car, it's not simple because they just want. And the world teaches you to just want. Someone that is coaching you on life will teach you that your wants are obsolete because you really don't have any wants when you go into the spirit part of life. Mm. There's a gap there. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I know that some people say, well, they, they don't believe in the Lord this way and that way, but there's a higher power. that gives you access to wealth within first, which is why I always go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God gave land. To this Adam and Eve, right? That is the first commodity that a man and a woman should be looking at, but there's some need for congruency and understanding there. The other thing is, is to understand in America, as you said, you can't even own land mm. because you're always being taxed on it. Right. It mm -hmm. belongs to the Rockefellers and the Queen of uh, Queendom. Overseas, am I not right? Well, she just passed, so it's Charles now, right? Her heir. Okay, <laughs> but this is it, and these are um, points that people don't understand. So what does that mean? That means that Washington, D.C. and Virginia's area, Charles get proceeds off of Commonwealth um, um, uh, taxes in that. I'm not going to go too deep, but Commonwealth is Commonwealth for a reason. It's connected to over, over there. Well, all states are really Commonwealths. They just don't directly call them Commonwealth. Like you have the Commonwealth of Virginia, but New York City is a Commonwealth. All states are a Commonwealth because of that fact. It's just not right. noted. That fact, that fact needs. Don't you think that that fact Commonwealth needs to be understood that it's connected to over? in England I mean, I mean pertaining to banking I mean you can relate it to anything I mean the whole to understand banking is to understand the true essence of America because it is a business so that's why you have to be about your business um, I mean the conversation just, just can go so many different directions on what you you know when you're dealing with confidence and you're dealing with America and you're dealing with banking you're dealing with opportunity some people actually might say it's broke, but it's not broke. You know, it really comes down to interest, you know, and if you don't know, you're going to, you're going to fall victim to the interest. 
you know, then you can get into the conversation of communities. How are you going to build confidence? You know, how are you going to build confidence to navigate through it? Because, I mean, you, you can get into so many different conversations <laughs> about banking and confidence. You know what I'm saying? Because it really stems from the home. You can have that conversation. Right? It takes a tribe. Remember that? I mean, I'm 43. I know I'm telling on myself. That's okay. But still, you know. When I was growing up, you know, my neighbor's moms was my mom's. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't curse, fight, do anything. because It's just respect. We don't have that nowadays. Young women are having babies, you know, and there's no more families, no more homes, stuff like that. So you can go into how you build confidence on that. I mean, the conversation can go so many different directions. So I don't really know how to, you know... <laughs> stay stay in the groove of this conversation because you it can go it can tangent off when you talk about confidence within banking community family you know okay yeah i get what um, you're saying it is a big um conversation go ahead ashley one thing i want to say is what you said the banking system isn't broken it's not it's not it's doing exactly what it was designed yeah, to do exactly to keep to keep those who are not supposed to understand it exactly. in a place of not understanding. Exactly. So when you exactly. get people like you who want to teach them, it's almost like, right. hey, what what are you doing? Why would you why would you teach them about that? Why would you give them that information? Because now now you're now you're rocking the boat. How dare you rock the boat? How dare you try to instill confidence in these people and and teach them and grow them up so that when they walk in, no, you're not just gonna give me a six percent interest rate because you say so. Right. What is today's rate? Right, right. But the only thing, the only thing I can say to that, the only thing I can say to that, and I look every, I'm a realist. I get it from my mother. I'm very technical. You know, they're not going to care. Excuse me. They're not going to care. And we know who they are. It's just, I'm just saying, they're not going to care until I get to that level. Because at the end of the day, you can tell anybody anything. And if they don't practice it, it's just like what you were saying, you know, about Jesus, what he was saying about if you hear my voice, Right. I can preach to them. To, I'm blue in the face and they ain't going to pick it up. But only the people who want to pick it up, pick it up because I'm on that vibration. But at the end of the day, unless I'm like Joe Alstein or if I'm like um, Les Brown, for that matter, public speaking, unless I'm touching people like that, then they're going to care. But for me, 11 followers on YouTube, you know, only five episodes of a podcast. They don't really care until I start yeah, making right noise. Here. And so people like us really do make noise. And now we really, I got 30, 40, 50, a million followers. And now I'm really buzzing. Till then, they don't care. There's a resentment there. You're right. But they're not going to say anything. Yeah. They don't, they don't believe in me. It's up to me to have that confidence to believe in me. Right. Right. right? So let me tell you, I mean, I have a story to tell. I should come out with a book. I swear to God. Like, I have, I mean, we all have lives. But you want to talk about confidence? Because I was really impressed with, what you sent me, Kim, about confidence, because I really do have a story to tell when it comes to confidence. You know, in 2008, I blindedly just went from Atlanta to uh, Charleston, South Carolina. No friends, no family, no nothing. I just packed up my truck with $500 in my name. And the only thing I said to myself was, I'm going to be all right. It's the only thing I said to myself. So you want to talk about confidence? I can't even make that up. Times were hard. I just finished a business with my friend. I told my mother that I wanted to disappear. And um, she was like, well, do what you got to do. And the only reason I called my mother, because I needed my social security card, because I got a job. <laughs> That's the only reason I, I just disappeared. And no friends, no family, but I kept it within a five-hour uh, drive of my mother, just in case something happened, I could just drive back. But if you want to talk about the ultimate confidence, you really, really have to say to yourself, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. And you have to... But you have to know why you're going to be all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, I'm going to be all right. Unless, you know, your faith in the Lord and all this other stuff, which, which, which I did. But I had a skill. I cleaned carpets and I knew that I can get a job. So I kind of relied on something tangible. But I knew deep down, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. And it, did, it worked out. So like Jay-Z and all these celebrities and everybody else, the number one thing is you got to believe in yourself. That's just how I feel. And pertaining to mortgages, and it's just, I don't know. I've come across so many people who just don't know. Like like, like you were saying, you know, you, you do it from a realtor side, right? You don't do it from a mortgage side, right? Mm 
Well, my sister's a lender, so it's a little bit different. Her and I work jointly, and because she's my sister, I'll go to her, and I'll be like, so explain this to me, because, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I want to own a house one day, so I need to understand, but I want to also understand to better gauge my client to go, okay, I hear what you're saying. I want you to understand all of this, so I don't give them everything, because that's not my area of expertise. I refer them to her, but I do understand to some degree some of that information. I have to, so yeah. Yeah. Um, are you closing people? Well, I should say, are you, are you like staring them towards or your lenders are they, are, are they staring them towards like FHA products or conventional products? No. What are they doing? They are doing conventional and unconventional. I've had people that come in and want to do like the, the most unconventional loan that the lender in my office that I will go to also is, um, for people who are self-employed because they open that up where they can put the money down, the interest rate is higher, the liability is higher, mm -hmm. but they don't have to show as much information as they had to with the conventional loans. So they're able to do things a little bit more outside the box, especially because, you know, everybody now works for themselves. They're working from home because there was the great, um, what did they call it? The where everybody started working from home and work. Yeah. The great recession, I guess. I don't know. Ricky, do you have anything you want to add? Oh, no, I'm just soaking all this in. I, I appreciate the conversation and, 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 and I'm, just, I'm, I'm just soaking it in. I think okay. that um, when I come back from Africa, we, we're going to come back on and talk about this um, at length with the educational components. Um, I want you guys, um, especially Gregson, to add his information so that we can have that because it's, it's going to help a lot for people to know that there are educators that can help them to set goals rather than have mortgages that they've signed and in the next coming year or so, they may not be able to man maintain that mortgage. It reminds me of 2008, even historically going back to the Great Depression. Um, there's a timeline of situations that repeat themselves. And the only reason why they repeat and people get caught up in it in a negative way is because they didn't learn how to handle it when it first came up. You understand? The understanding that I'm trying to convey um, is no, the system isn't broken, but people are not educated on how to ride that system. Some people don't care. Some people are happy. You know, you again, it goes back to if they want to hear your voice or not, you know, um, but as an educator, it's also up to me to get creative and stay resilient and stay, you know, creative in my delivery to everybody, you know. I, I want to say that, um, uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off. No, 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 no. Um, we will subscribe to your YouTube, but one of the things about um, education is that people don't like it, hmm. especially in, in the tribes that we come from because I teach mental health and wellness, um, business coaching and more. And what I find is, is that it's, it's not that they don't want what you have, it's just that they haven't become ready to learn. The right. crisis comes and that's when they're ready to learn, like right, right now. Right. Go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say, that's 100% right. But again, as an educator, I have to get creative. It's like a teacher in a classroom, right? You have to learn how to connect with those kids. You have to get That's creative, true. right? So it's up to me as an educator. I mean, I know I'm doing a lot of other things, you know, but it really is up to me to get creative in a way where it's attractive. Like even talking about life insurance, right? I'm not, I don't want to talk to them about life insurance. I want to talk to them about wealth management, right? You have to try to make it important. You have to try to make it exciting. Um, it's like my mother, and I, I learned a lot from my mother. Me and my mother got tight over the last 20 years because my father raised me as a single parent. But looking back, there's a lot of important lessons that I learned from my mom, you know, and I learned that from my mom. You know. Okay, give them your information on how to contact you. Oh, okay. Um, my IG, my Instagram is grex underscore silverrex185. My YouTube is a uh, business and bid business and bid podcast. That's my YouTube Facebook uh, business and bid my group. I just started, you know, I just started my podcast. And again, I'm, I utilize my mortgage experience to 
help people understand the workings of money and getting involved with life insurance is helping under helping people understand how money works and um the two go hand in hand when i first moved here to detroit um with nikki with my ex-wife um i um I, I i i took a job doing debt debt settlement and um i learned how to utilize and, and analyze a credit report even even different way different than a mortgage because i can literally now save you you know seventy five thousand on credit you wouldn't believe how much debt people have on credit cards eighty thousand dollars seventy five thousand dollars a hundred thousand dollars and I can save you like 80% of that. Some people didn't believe me. But with the system of consolidation and moving, I learned I, I learned mortgages still, but it was from a different complexity. Mm -hmm. On people want to come and be like, okay, a $250,000 mortgage. Okay, what does that equate to? Principal and interest. Oh, yeah, what about taxes and insurance? Oh, don't forget about the HOAs. You got to put all that into consideration. Or you got to dog your HOAs even more. You know, so it's like you got to, there's a whole lot of dynamics. It, like I said, it branches off because you can have a whole lot of different conversations. But mortgages, there's so many different ways that you can approach a mortgage and keep it to your benefit. Because at the end of the day, it's about you and your family. It's not about them. You have to have the confidence to navigate that. Even with a FHA product, first time home buyers, you know, you can put down three and a half percent. You know, you don't even need a 700 credit score. You know, if, if you're a hometown buyer and you want, you, you, you can buy a conventional with three and a half percent there, but you're going to have mortgage insurance and they more, oh, what is mortgage insurance? So there's an education that has to go through there because you can navigate, but you have to have the confidence that, you know what, this is what I want to do. You know, I, I want to use the system against itself and don't be scared. That's right. The, because you can do that with mortgages. You can do that. That's why people, that's why, that's why there's a, um, a variable interest rate. You know, you have a 30 year fixed. That's why the variable interest rate is there. It's there to hedge things and make money off real estate. So you can buy a house at a 10, one arm. Well, you have 10 years before that interest rate adjusts. So that's mm -hmm. 10 years to get whatever you need out of the house, fix it up however you want in the house and flip your money and sell it within those yep. 10 years. You don't have to have a 30 year fix. And if you're doing a seven one arm, your interest rate is even lower, but you have to be careful because the interest rate will adjust. You know what I'm saying? And then it becomes a 30 year fix after that. People don't know that a variable rate is a fixed rate after, after the change date. So if, the, if it's a seven one arm, that means in seven years it's going to change. And that one means it's going to for the rest of the, of the, of the term, which is 30 years. So again, it just comes with a certain type of um, education. Thank you for tuning in. We thank you for being a part of our conversation on Lit TV and Kim's Universe. Have a blessed day and stay peaceful.